Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to Hacksplain. In this episode today, we're going to have a look at the Manipulate Basket Challenge. Three-star challenge, so take care to listen closely because that's going to be an interesting one. The description is telling us, put an additional product into another user's shopping basket, and it falls into the broken access control category. So let's start by registering a user going right up here, say login, not yet a customer, and we need a new user. So let's call this user um, whatever test at hacksplain, if I can type, dot com, password is ASDF, ASDF, random security question, answer is ASDF. All right, click on register. We don't save that over here. We come back to this login prompt and we're going to log in with this newly created user. Perfect. So now we're logged in. And I'm already having my burp suite running down below here, and I'm connected to it right up here. And the challenge is to add something to your basket which doesn't belong to yourself. So the obvious thing to do first is you want to add something to your own basket. And let's just quickly check out our basket, which is right up here, which currently is empty. All right, so let's go back and let's add banana juice because you folks know that banana juice is my favorite juice so I add that to the basket and I see that the banana juice was added so if I go up here right now I should see that there is a banana juice right in here and it costs one dollar and 99 cents that's awesome all right so let's go straight into burb and see what we can find and we do see a post request right over here that looks like the request that was adding the item to my basket and if you look closely it tells you that the product id was six so the banana juice is product id six it was added to basket id number five and i added one piece quantity one so let's use that control r and send it to repeater and see what we can do with that so what if we sent this over again to my basket we do see a validation error and it tells me that the basket ID must be unique and there is a validation value 5 whatever we, we don't really know what's going on right now but there is something going wrong so let's start by um, trying to adding another product what if we add product number seven let's do that we get a different response and so now we get a success response saying that looks good. Your product has been added to the basket and there is one of that in it. So let's quickly check it out. If we go to our basket one more time, and I probably have to reload that, we will see or hopefully see that there is a, another product in it, which is a t-shirt. That's awesome. So it turns out the product ID number seven is an Ovis Chew Shop t-shirt actually something that I would love to have right so let's go back to that and let's see if we can add something to another basket which is an ours so the first thing you would think of is if our basket ID is number five let's add it to whatever let's add it to the basket ID number six and send this to the server and what we see over here is that we're getting in 401 unauthorized response and it tells me in an error message that this is an invalid basket ID and that I'm not allowed to put something in there so now you gotta think what can we do to circumvent this control and I want to point you to something which first of all the WSTG which is the OWASP web security testing guide an awesome piece of information I've recorded a video about that and we'll link it right in the top right corner. So make sure to check this out. This thing is awesome. Anyway, back to what I want to show you right now. So the OWASP WSTG teaches you about security vulnerabilities. And the one we're seeing here is 
HTTP parameter pollution. And without going into the details of this entire text right now, it basically tells you that in a lot of times you can use a parameter like our product ID or our basket ID and duplicate it, sending it twice or three times, doesn't matter, to the server and see how the server interprets that. So this basically means you take something that exists once and send it another time to the server and see if it reacts in a different way. Go check out this article later. I will link this in the description. All right, so let's go back to that. With that in mind, we will use what we have over here, our basket ID, and copy that for now. So let's do that. Basket ID, copy that and I will just put it down one more time right over here. And remember that our basket ID was five. So what we can do right now is we're trying to pollute the parameter, sending it twice in my post request, once to basket ID number six, and once to basket ID number five. So let's see if this changes anything. If I send this, it tells me unauthorized. So it seem, seems like I'm still not authorized to do so. But what if I flip that around? So remember, five is our basket ID, six is another one of any other user. We don't actually know which user it is. And so let's try to flip that. And I will also use a different product. Let's say product ID number 10, which we're not having in our basket. So Let's try to send this to the server. And we're interestingly getting a SQL light constraint error right now that I guess that the product ID is not known. Uh, I haven't checked it out to be honest, but we already see that we have put an additional product into another user's shopping basket. So I will hop back to Product ID number seven, where I know that this is a t-shirt. Still getting the same error. Anyway, we have successfully put a product into another user's basket. And this guy or girl is probably going to be surprised the next time. He or she logs in and finds an awesome Ovo's Chew Shop t-shirt right in their basket. All right, this was it for today. Make sure to check out OS WSDG, check out the HTTP parameter pollution attack, which is a cool attack vector that you can play around with in the future. And apart from that, subscribe in the top right corner. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.